has to be uh, uh, alcohol based sanitizer also to be provided on board and uh, unfortunately there were no N95 mask on the last week which I did Singapore uh, for any of the crew and uh, there were not enough sanitizers as well if you can see in the advisory it says that you need to have six uh, uh, 30 ml sanitizer sh uh, should be there on the flight but uh, we were only getting those uh, those small uh, small sanitizers uh, and uh, they were not enough actually and uh, there are few more things besides this uh, that whenever a crew is coming from a, a, a much affected country like Italy or uh, Spain or uh, for that matter any other country they are not been provided the, the, the quarantine leave so what the crew members are doing it whenever they do such such flight they report sick and uh, that they go to the office respective office and they convert their report sick into the into the quarantine leave however the regulation says that whenever you do such country uh, even the crew member has to be on 14 days mandatory quarantine period thank you for joining in on this conversation and uh, a lot has been of course happening with covid-19 in fact airlines is one aspect which has been extra careful about this and uh, keeping in mind that you know government has uh, recommended that people should take up the concept of social recession and you know stay back home and not be out the the point that we're trying to raise is that what happens with those who have who are facing this on a regular basis for example pilots and crew members i mean on the levels of safety how safe is this that you know we let this exposure happen and on a daily basis as a part of their profession that they have to meet see one thing that uh, the regulator the DGCA and the airlines don't realize that if you go through all the material about coronavirus, uh, one of the major thing is uh, contact with metal, which actually transmits, like they even advise that when you drive a car, <laughs> you have to wash your hands with sanitizer whenever you open the door, when you touch the handle or the steering. Just look at the case of the crew, like the cabin crew, they'll have to handle the main door, the cabin doors, the cockpit door, the toilet doors, all of them have metal handles. The pilots, again, the toilet doors, every time they use the toilet and the cockpit door several times and anything, they are touching metals. So if they have come in contact, if there is one passenger who is a germ carrying member, then he's going to be transmitting that to everyone on board. Because if they have touched the toilet, that's all that it requires for them to transmit. Now, this may be dormant in you for a couple of weeks, and you have infected the whole crew on board who are going to be passing it on to several others. And this is a cumulative effect, and they don't think of that at all. Right, and, and keeping in mind that, you know, there have been certain kind of complaints that are coming up that the airline crews also not being given the safety masks to keep in, uh, you know, the resources are not very intact and adequate. Your comment on that? Yeah, no airline has adequate uh, inner supplies. And, uh, you know, what they will do is, I, I worked in airlines, I know, like even when there is a technical snag, and if they don't have space, they will tell you not to write it. They'll request you. They'll say at the end of the day or today, they'll carry it on. So the same thing will happen here. If they don't have, you know, they are not willing to cancel a flight because of a safety reason, which again is a not just the aircraft safety, it is his own safety or her safety. Now they're not going to, yeah. now when you come to a stage where you may lose your job because you know, if you refuse, you are a marked person. I, I've heard of Air India crew who have been targeted because they've refused to operate. And uh, the same thing, and in private carriers, it's worse. They don't even have a union to defend them. And this is something that airlines and regulators should know that only commercial interest is not sufficient. You've got to look at safety, not just the aircraft safety, the personal safety of the crew. 
Right, and adding on to the two unions part that you mentioned, just today two unions have, uh, have written to, of course, uh, the Minister of Civil Aviation that uh, they have not even been paid their salaries and they're, of course, two employees of Air India and uh, they have been a part of the whole evacuation, uh, uh, you know, trip that they were into and they haven't even been paid their wages and they're requesting in a letter to the minister that they should be given their wages, if not at least, you know, being paid off the emergency resources for which they were used. No, that's a fact. Now, on the other hand, you will find none of the executives have lost out. They will travel in comfort because these unpaid pilots and the cabin crew are working their butts off. And nobody appreciates, but if they refuse to operate a flight, they will all jump saying that it is anti-national and rubbish like that. But it is a fact that if you're not paid your salary, you know, you have a lot of personal commitment. So you have crew who are operating with financial stress, their own safety stress because of their health. They're exposed to all this, but nobody appreciates what they do. They will only point out that somebody has refused to operate a flight. And the way the management functions, I've heard of several threatening calls which are made no, and I asked them to produce the call logs of all the management people and the cabin crew who have refused or the pilots who have refused. Then you will find out that a last majority of them are forced to operate a flight, which is not safe at all. All right, sir. 